And welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Appreciate you all being here this morning. This is our annual meeting Sunday. We need at least, according to the Constitution, 30 people for a quorum. I think we might have just squeaked by with 30 people. So that's good. Uh, I'll save most of the announcements, or all of them, with the exception of one, until the end of the worship service. But just to let you know, in your worship folders, there is a time and talent insert. So we're going to crank that back up again since we're getting back to a more normal form of worship. We thought we'd reinstate that. So if you have not completed one of those forms, and it's kind of confusing because this past year has been, I don't know, strange one. But uh, go ahead, fill that out and place it in the basket at the, at the entrance to the sanctuary on your way out. In our prayers today, we're going to continue to remember Vernon Barr, who is recovering from heart valve surgery, and I neglected to call him this week. I think he's going in for another surgery on his leg. Lori Prock now still facing some medical challenges, and I haven't talked to Lori either. Anybody know how she's doing? Of course you don't. And we'll continue to pray for Pam Zahn as she continues in hospice care. With that, I invite you to please stand as you are able. As we begin our worship service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Amen. Let us come home to God, confessing our sin. Merciful Father, we have sinned by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We do not fully live as your sons and daughters. We use your gifts to our own ends. Forgive us and restore us, that we may resist all that draws us away from you and be at peace with you and with one another. Amen. We are reconciled to God through Christ. Once dead, we are now alive in God. Once lost, we are now found. You are connected to the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and we will sing our gathering song, all verses of that. Restore in us, O God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in grace, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
We continue our worship service with the reading of God's Word. Good morning. Good morning. Please read responsively Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of his soul. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and he delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them, and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. second reading is from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. The word of the Lord. I now ask you to please stand as you are able, and as we read together, the gospel acclamation is printed in your worship folders. We are turning, Lord, to hear you. You are merciful and kind, slow to anger, rich in blessing, and with love to us inclined. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that they may clearly be, so that they may, so that it may clearly be seen that their deeds have been done in God. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. This is probably one of the more, if not the most, popular Bible verses of the New Testament. and uh, Which is good, and I think appropriately so, but it also can be a danger because, as is often the case with things that we repeat over and over again, or 
hear over and over again, they can end up becoming just so much white noise and the true meaning of it can be lost on us. So with that said, let's take a closer look this morning at this particular verse. For God so loved the world, and I say it every Sunday, and guess what? I say it again. This is where it all begins. God so loved the world, God so loved you. And I contend, although I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a social scientist, or maybe not even a great theologian, but I contend based on what I've witnessed in my life that bad behavior, most bad behavior, is a result of the fact that you do not know you are loved. For whatever reason, you have not come to terms with your value, with your worth, and as a result, you grab and you grasp and try to get for me, 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 because you don't know that you already have all that you need. You are already loved. So this is where it begins. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you. You got to somehow, some way, at some time come to terms with that. Because unless you do, unless you do, it's going to be very difficult for you to share that love. Which is the first commandment according to Jesus, right? Know that you're loved and love everybody else. That's what Jesus commands. But unless you know that you are loved, it's difficult to love everybody else. How many homeless folks do you know that are home builders, contractors, building homes for other people? How many do you know? Probably not many. Logic would dictate to us that one of the uh, contingent qualifications for being a home builder is to actually live in your own home. And one of the contingent qualifications for you genuinely, honestly, sincerely sharing love is to know deep in your soul that you are loved. So that's the first part. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son. So how, as Christians, are we connected to that love? How do we see that love? How do we understand that love? How do we see examples of that love? And the answer is... And the answer is... Jesus! I know, it's early. It's early. Actually, it's later, isn't it? Is it later or is it earlier? It's earlier, yeah. We've, we've moved ahead. So, okay. So I'll give you credit for being a little bit earlier than you may be used to. But we are connected to that love in Jesus Christ through the example of his life, through the courage of his crucifixion, through the hope of his resurrection. That's how we understand God's love for us. What are some of the things that that connection tells us? As I said before, Jesus tells us that you are worthwhile. Jesus stepped in and saved the life of the adulterous woman that was about to be stoned. Why? Because he knew that her life was worthwhile. And he knows that your life is worthwhile as well. Jesus tells you that your sins are forgiven. He, he approached the uh, paralytic man. You remember when those guys raised the uh, paralyzed fellow down through the roof? So that he could be healed by Jesus. And how did Jesus heal him? He said, your sins are forgiven. And in declaring that to that man, he was made whole. The same holds true for us. When God declares to you that your sins are forgiven, you too are made whole. And our connection to the love of God in Jesus comes with a promise of peace. So many times as Jesus came to his disciples, 
He said, peace be with you. And when Jesus comes to you, he says, peace be with you. So, as Christians, we understand and connect to the love of God in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes... Now, in some circles, outside of Lutheran circles, and I'm not going to claim that they're wrong and we're right, or vice versa... Bottom line, nobody knows because we're talking about God, right? And our puny little brains can no way, shape, or form have that all figured out. But belief is more than a one-time intellectual and verbal assent. I believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Oh, yeah? How do you know that? How do you know that to be true? Just because you say that you do? How do we know that, we, that you do? Well, we don't. So it has to be, it has to be more than that. Belief, belief for us as Christians is more than parroting some formula. Belief is actively responding and engaging in the reality of God. It's not just some sort of passive one-time thing, get out of hell free card. It's not that. Jesus calls you in to active participation in your life and in the life of the world. Finally, we do all of this so that we may not perish but have eternal life. Now, we as Christians believe that there is more to life, more to our existence than what we see before us right now. Don't know what that means, don't know what that looks like, but we believe in that promise of eternal life for us all. And that's good. That can give us hope. But Jesus also tells us that that should not be the focus of who we are and how we live. The focus should be on who you are today and how you live today. It begins, it begins right here, right now, and continues on into eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that so everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Because God is complex, this verse is more than just some romantic, simplistic notion of God sacrificing his son to magically save everyone who believes. Rather, it is a concise and practical explanation as to how we as Christians should live in the world. We are to live in love. We are to live in love as we understand it in Jesus Christ. And we are to respond to that love by living fully, richly, totally engaged in our own lives and in the lives of the world. John 3.16 is more than a shallow claim of who you were meant to be. Rather, it is a powerful promise of who you are. Any questions? On Wednesday, I suggested people could text me questions. I don't have my phone with me, so sorry. You don't have that option this morning, but I'll, I'll remember to bring it next Sunday. Well, seeing none, we conclude with an enthusiastic Amen. And our hymn of the day is printed in your worship folders. We'll sing three verses. Verse 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4 of Amazing Grace.
as life endures. Again, I invite you to please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is centered into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now relying on the promises of, the, of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all of those in need, responding to, Lord, in your love, with hear our prayer. O oh God, your Son reveals your saving love to the world. Inspire the church to be faithful witnesses of love in word and in deed. Bless your church around the world and bless your church here in this place as we name this morning Brandon Landreth, Lane Haft, Jared Barr, Serena Ugaritz, David Velker, Bruce Redant, Tyler Eno, Riley Celine, Luciana Nas, Colin Elke, and Croy Sala. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, nourish your creation. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, you sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. This morning we pray for Vernon, Lori, Pam, and all those we bring to you now, Lord, in the silence of our hearts and minds. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, fill this congregation to overflowing with amazing grace. Guide us as we meet today to chart our course for the future. Give us faith, wisdom, and courage to do your will. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give thanks for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all those saints into the fullnesses of your promises Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please be seated. We continue our worship with our offering. If you have a contribution to make, you can place it in the basket at the ent entrance to the sanctuary and also... If you have a time and talent to complete, put that in there as well. And for your offerings to St. John, we pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with Holy Communion, and if every, 
I can't think this morning. It is too early, apparently. Is there anyone who wants to participate in communion this morning who does not have an individual meal? If so, raise your hand. Okay, we're good to go. I'll give you instructions as to when and how you need to prepare that for eating and drinking. And we begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, gracious God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts, minds, and souls to the reality of your presence as we gather for this holy meal. Let us speak together the holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is prepared and all are welcome. So I invite you to get your meals ready with the small end with the bread. Go ahead and peel that back. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Turn your meals over. Peel back over the juice. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, and we pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, again, thank you very much for being here today. So this is our annual meeting today. We'll have it in the sanctuary so you can stay seated where you are. We'll take about five minutes at the conclusion of uh, dismissal to set up the tables. And your executive committee will be seating, sitting up front here. And if you don't have an annual report and you need one, there are still some copies on the table in the narthex. And... Uh, so again, take about, well, just about five minutes after the end of worship service to get things set up for the annual meeting. Coming up this week, Tuesday, the sanctuary again is open from 8 to 8 for prayer and meditation. Take advantage of that if you wish. 
Wednesday, 6.30, midweek Lenten services. Next Sunday, we'll be back to 8 o'clock and 10.30 with Sunday school at 9.30. And in addition to the annual reports on the table in the narthex are updated telephone directories. So take one of those if you wish as well. Anything I may have missed that needs to be shared with everyone. And don't forget those time and talent sheets. So as we head out into this day and head into, <coughs> pardon me, our annual meeting, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is Jesus Loves Me. We'll sing all three verses of Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And now let us go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.